Hi, this is Dave Burkett, Lions beat writer from the Oakland Press, and I'm here to give my take on the, uh, the Lions draft. Uh, let's start off with a grade, first of all. I think the Lions did uh, a good job hitting their areas of need. Uh, they, they came into the draft with, with, with five positions that they needed to hit most. It was defensive end, defensive tackle, linebacker, offensive tackle, and running back. And they, they took all, care of all five of those positions in the first three rounds. I'm going to give them a B on, on, on that alone. Uh, now, how whether that goes up or down, I guess, will, will play out in the next couple of years and uh, be determined by uh, the talent evaluation. Uh, some people thought they reached a little bit by taking uh, right tackle Gazer Cherilis with the first, their first pick, uh, number 17 overall. They traded down from 15. And, and Cherilis is a, a big mauling right tackle. Uh, he moves pretty well. He actually fits pretty good into the Lions' zone blocking scheme. Um, I, you know, I was a little, uh, I thought there were some better tackles on the board at that point, uh, especially at 15 when they traded down with the Chiefs. Brandon Elbert from Kansas City was out there still, and, and the Kansas City actually traded up into the 15th spot to take him. Um, Jeff Ota from Pitt, another big mauler on the, who, who slots in perfectly at right tackle, was still on the board, and he went a couple choices later. But the Lions really like Cherilis. They like uh, his work ethic, and they think that he'll be able to come in uh, and start right away for him at right tackle this year. Um, in the second round, they, they grabbed the linebacker, Jordan Dizon from Colorado, who, again, another player that they, they identified early on in the, uh, the talent evaluation process and, and uh, they think fits their scheme. He's a little bit undersized, six foot, about 230 pounds, but he had a real productive career at Colorado. Uh, he was big, big 12 freshman of the year a few years ago, big 12 player of the year, defensive player of the year this past season. And uh, again, he's a little bit undersized, maybe not your, your typical middle linebacker, but in the Tampa 2 system, he's going to be asked to cover a lot. And he's a real, uh, you know, he's a real form tackler. I mean, he, he does a lot of things well. So from that standpoint, the Lions got the, uh, the type of player that, that they th think fits great in their system. Um, the third round, they started by trading up two spots. Uh, again, we, back to the, the first pick, when they, when they traded with Kansas City, they, they move, were able to move up in the, the third round 10 spots. Uh, then they, they swung a deal on the uh, day two of the draft to move up two spots and, and grab the running back that they hope will be the running back of the next few years, Kevin Smith, a, a highly productive runner from uh, down in Florida. He, uh, he nearly broke Barry Sanders' NCAA career rushing mark last year, rushed for over 2,500 yards. Uh, he's got a little bit of wear on the legs. He, he set an NCAA record with 450 carries, but uh, he's a guy that really excels in the zone blocking scheme the Lions are going to. And, and one thing new offensive coordinator Jim Coletto highly values is, is vision, and uh, Kevin has uh, plenty of that. Uh, he, he seems like a pretty interesting guy, too. I, I highly recommend anybody check out his website, I'mKevinSmith.com. you find a lot of interesting facts there. Uh, later on in the third round, they, they took care of the other two needs that they had. That's uh, Cliff Averill, the defensive end from Purdue. Kind of a speed rusher. Don't know if he'll ever develop into a, uh, a three-down lineman. But uh, for what the Lions need, they need to be able to get off the field on third downs. They need to be able to put some pressure on, on quarterbacks. Remember, they released Columbia Edwards uh, last year, the second half of the season, when they, uh, when they really slumped to that one and seven finish. They, they had a hard time getting to the quarterback. And, and that's really what drives this defense, is the ability to, with a four-man front to pressure the quarterback. And in Averill and in Andre Fluellen, the other third round pick from Florida State, uh, they believe they got that. Fluellen, uh, you know, he, he's a real talented guy. Uh, if he had a different senior year, he might have been a, a first round or at least a second round pick. Has that type of talent. He, he projects great at the under tackle position. But uh, he had some injuries and, and never quite lived up to, uh, to his billing as a, a talented player. But uh, so what the Lions are hoping for is that these guys come in. They're obviously going to be backups next year, Fluellen behind Redding and, and Averill at one of the defensive end spots, probably opposite Dwayne White behind Ikaika Alama Francis, a second round pick from last year. What the Lions are hoping for is that they can get some production out of those guys and, and really start building their depth. And, uh, you know, I, I guess, again, it's what, what really this draft will, will come down to three years from now is whether the guys that the Lions targeted, because they did identify all, all five of these guys when they brought them in for visits, when they interviewed them at the Combine and watched them at the Senior Bowl, what it will really come down to is whether the players that, that they drafted and then they identified uh, are better than the players they could have had. Is Cherilis better than Brandon Elbert? You know, is, is uh, Dizon, is he a better linebacker than Dan Connor? Uh, is Smith, is he going to be a better running back than, than Jamal Charles, who went a few picks after him to Kansas City? Uh, those are the things that are really going to define whether the Lions had a good draft, and we're not going to be able to tell that this year or three years from now. Again, I have him as a B right now, but I think uh, three years from now we'll be able to tell a whole lot more. And one last question before we get done here. Uh, a lot of people have questions on Caleb Campbell, the uh, safety linebacker that the Lions took with their last pick in the, uh, the seventh round. 
uh, whether he, he's a legitimate NFL player or not. He's a good story. You obviously saw him on ESPN, on the NFL Network. Uh, he got all kinds of attention because he's the first Army player drafted in a decade, and uh, he, he's taken advantage of a new rule in the service academies that allows players to, um, if they make an NFL team or a professional sports team uh, of any kind, to, uh, to delay their, their commitment and, and not have to serve uh, in the armed forces. He'll still be an active uh, uh, member of the, uh, the Army next year, but his job will be to play football, and on his off days, Tuesdays in the NFL, he'll be asked to go out and recruit uh, at local uh, recruiting stations, malls, high schools, things like that. Um, you know, again, I don't, I, I'd be lying if I said I've actually seen him play and, and know what kind of player he is, but from talking to people, Mel Kuyper uh, actually said that uh, he's a legitimate uh, NFL draftable player. Uh, he had him as a possible seventh round choice. And the fact of the matter is he has a shot to make the Lions team. Uh, the Lions are going to play him as strong side linebacker to begin with. He provides a little bit of depth at safety in case uh, Kelvin Pearson, who's in a little bit of trouble right now with the law, uh, in case the Lions decide to release him. Uh, so he has some versatility, and he could be a, a valuable special teams player. Again, we'll have to wait till August to see how him and the rest of the Lions draft picks pan out.